Hey there, if you're watching this video, you're probably at the part of your work where you're wondering, how do I sustain my work and what is going to come next? This video is all about helping you to reflect on where you've come from and how you can do a quick check-in with a very simple framework that I'm going to teach you. You might be at the point where you're thinking, should I become my own nonprofit? Or is there something else that is the answer like a social business? As you can see, there are a lot of risks that are involved with either becoming a nonprofit or a social business. And that's why we have to think about all of the possible funding options that we have available to us. This is a model for sustainability that you can use to help you think about what are the different facets that you need to put in place well before it's time to sustain your work. This is that work that you should do at the very, very end, but should be at least a few years out or somewhat in advance. So we're going to talk about four pieces of this framework today. We'll talk about an investment divestment strategy, coordinated and complementary funding streams, a long-term change strategy, and how all of this is tied together to address shared risk and protective factors or root causes of social issues. Now, in an ideal world, we would have a vision for change, some funding to do that vision, some time to implement that funding. We'd get some outcomes that we can me measure and some measurable success. And then it's time to do something. And that might be exactly where you're at right now. What I suggest is that you take this time to innovate and think about what are the things that you learned? So what improvements have you made? What kinds of systemic changes or policy changes happened? What lessons did you learn and what challenges did you address along the way? As you take time to reflect, a simple couple of questions and framework parts of this larger piece will help you think about where did you come from and where do you want to go? The three questions I really want you to think about focus on the three aspects that I have in these overlapping circles implementation, outcomes, and funding. These are pieces that must be aligned in order for you to be successful and for you to sustain your work over time. The questions that I want you to reflect on are what worked and what didn't? What are the things that we're trying to change? And what are the accessible funding streams that our partners or that we can access in order to do this work? If you can focus on these three questions, you will be much better off in your sustainability than if you did nothing else. So as you do this reflection and as you think about the tool that I'm going to share with you, these are the key questions that I want you to put into your framework for what kinds of conversations you're going to have with yourself, as well as what kind of conversations you need to have with your partners. Now let's talk about the sustainability reflections tool. This tool is grounded in the three questions that I just shared with you, where we're thinking about where we've came from, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. The sustainability reflections tool is not meant to be an overwhelming exercise. Rather, it's a place for you to jot down ideas, highlight things that come to mind, and document anything that you want to work on. As you go through this tool, let's talk a little bit about how you can use the framework that I showed you earlier, our dimensions of sustainability, as well as those three parts, implementation, outcomes, and our funding, to get a little further than where you are today. As you have more conversations around sustainability, this fillable PDF can help you to gather your thoughts and document any reflections that you might have. It starts with an investing and divesting strategy. What that means is that as you think about what you did well and what you need to do in the future, you want to focus on the things that worked well for you, that reached outcomes, and that you'll be successful in doing in the future. You also want to not focus or divest on things that didn't work or were challenges for you that shouldn't proceed in your future plans. You'll also think about this in a framing of, did this go well from your perspective or did it not go so well? And what did others tell you? Because the feedback of the people that you serve in your community is very, very important. The next part of this is think about what types of work you've engaged in and what types of community members or people did you serve in this process? You might've served people at an individual or a family or relationship level, a community or a societal level. And you can simply tick any of these boxes if that applies. Of course, you can see there are lots of different types of work that you could have engaged in, including our Thrive Framework. Now, your work currently may not include all of these different areas, but if there are priorities for your community and their priorities in the future, you might want to document both the things that you're currently doing well, as well as the things that you would like to do in the future. The next step is to think about what are the root causes to the problems that you've been trying to solve? And how can you think of this a little bit broader in a sense of there's individual, community, and relational and societal risk factors that you might need to address through your work? 
Currently, you may be working on only one level or on multiple levels. And there also might be other risk factors that are not even listed here. And you can use the other areas to document those. Now, conversely, protective factors help us to strengthen the relationships and the individuals within our community. And if you are working on addressing some of these protective factors, you can also document which of those you are working on. Now, similarly, you might want to actually print out this document and then use color coding to show which ones you're currently working on and which ones you would like to work on in the future. If there are any protective factors that are not listed here, you're welcome to add them in the other category. Now, the last part of this is the aligned funding strategy, and this is where we bring it all together. What you want to do is think about what are the pieces of funding that are absolutely necessary to complete your work and to continue it moving forward. Those might mean that it has to fund the types of activities, or it might need to fund different protective factors or risk factors that you really want to move forward with your work. Now, as you think about this funding, this is a way for you to address what your funders' priorities are and also map them to what your priorities and what your vision are. This is an important strategy because if you're able to map those two things together, then what will happen is in the future, as you continue to see funding, your vision and the vision of your funders will continue to be aligned. If you at some point decide to take on additional work that is the vision of your funder and not necessarily your vision, you could have angst in your organization and your partnership. If you decide to do things that are beyond the scope of what you're already doing, those also could be really beneficial aspects to growing your work in the future. So you always have to be open to assessing the different opportunities and thinking about it from a multitude of ways. It could be a benefit to expand your work. It also could be a hindrance to expand your work as well. Remember, as you think about sustainability and have conversations with your partners, there are no right or wrong ways to do this work. There's only the movement forward. So focus on your outcomes, focus on where you want to go, and make sure that you're building strong partnerships to help get you there.